Well, boys, Merry Christmas. The Seattle Seahawks suck nuts. We just got absolutely destroyed by the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, probably some of the worst football we could have played is, you know, we played that bad. Uh, we, you know, we decided we wanted to run the ball in second and long. We run the ball on third and seven, lose a yard, then throw it short of the sticks and get a turnover on downs on fourth down. We were just making bonehead plays. We were making bonehead play calls, bonehead decisions, bonehead everything. This was just a bonehead game from the Seattle Seahawks. And honestly, the defense didn't do too bad. We gave up 24 points. Yeah, not good. But we forced like uh, like four three and outs. Like The third quarter, our defense was going crazy. We did, we did not let the Kansas City Chiefs get anything in the third quarter. And uh, our offense decided to do nothing in the third quarter as well. So it, overall, just a really bad game. The Seahawks' playoff hopes are pretty pretty down now uh you know the probably the worst thing about this is James Draws is a Chiefs fan and he is going to make a video on this he made a video last week Thursday night football it was it was devastating and it's going to happen again two weeks in a row I can almost guarantee it based on how bad this game was but let's take a look at the stats boys um so we had a terrible game and honestly I don't want to blame it on Geno Smith. I want to blame it on the, the the play calling and Geno Smith. Now, Geno Smith, he made some bonehead decisions. He had some bad throws. He had There's a lot of miscommunication with wide receivers. Um, but he had a play where it was like third and four, third and five. And he had like 15 yards wide open run. And this man threw it instead of running it. And we ended up getting nothing on that drive. It was sad. Kenneth Walker, 26 carries, 107 yards. He got his average up. He was averaging like one yard a rush, uh, but he started getting some like 15, 20 yard, 10 yard runs. He started doing a little bit better, but like when when you run it on first down and get nothing, why are you running it again on second down? It, like the, the running on second and long was just unbearable. And when we ran it on third and seven, I that was just blasphemous. Now, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. There are a lot of opportunities for us to get field goals, and that would have made the game like what nine to seventeen going into us having the ball on offense. So maybe we could have scored and then got a two point conversion or something like that. But in the moment, I don't think anybody was thinking, "Oh, we should kick these field goals because our offense has been doing absolutely nothing." Uh, you know, we everyone was kind of thinking fourth down, you have to go for it because we're getting dogged on so bad. Uh, but defensively. There, there was a switch in this game when we decided to put Boye Mafe in instead of Bruce Irvin. Now, I love Bruce Irvin as much as the next guy, but he looks geriatric out there. He he looks like he is lost out there. You know, he's jumping the snap like 50, 50 years early, uh, missing tackles, just taking bad angles. It, it, he did not look good today. And then we put Boye Mafe in, and immediately the defense starts looking better. We get pressure. We get run stops. Uh, you know, I think Boye Mafe, especially as a second round pick, we picked him in the second round. Why are we not starting him over uh, an old man? Uh, I love Bruce Irvin, but we drafted Boye Mafe in the second round. Why are we starting an old vet that's not going to play next year over him? Um, I, I, we did see some interesting guys out there. Jonathan Abram was a guy that I don't think we've seen play so far uh, since he's been signed, I think two or three weeks ago, but he didn't do a lot. He had a one good pass uh, defense against uh, Travis Kelsey, but he was just kind of getting around. I liked his energy, and uh, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Jamal Adams. You know, way way worse, but he was like always there, always around the play, and he was hyping guys up, and it was nice to see. But overall, horrible game for us. Th there's really no positives other than Godwin. I'm going to butcher this. Godwin Iguabuque. Um, this man should have been our punt or our kick returner for the entirety of the season. He is an absolute menace. He has like a 50-yard uh, return this week. Last week, he had a really big return. The week before, he had a big return. Uh, he had one drop, but, I mean, still, he's still doing very well. But there's not too many positives to gain from this game. Uh, so let's take a look at our playoff chances because, boy, they are slim now. For these playoff chances, uh, let me move uh, this. Uh, I have assumed what is happening this week, right? So we lost to the Chiefs, of course, uh, and then we went out. 
assuming we went out, which honestly is a bold assumption seeing as how bad we've been playing. Uh, the Panthers are beating the Lions, absolutely destroyed them. Don't know how the Vikings are doing against the Giants. They were up the last time I checked, but uh, I don't know. Uh, Vikings need to win that game against the Giants, and that'll be good for us because the Giants are another team that are in that uh, playoff wild cards, uh, you know, spot. The 49ers hopefully will beat the Commanders. That would help us a lot. Right now, it is tie game for the Vikings and the Giants. I uh, that is unfortunate. If the Dolphins beat the Packers, somehow that'll help us, I guess. But let's just not assume because even though the Packers suck, the, who knows about the Dolphins? Week 17 next week, of course, we got to win. And we got to root for the Colts over the Giants. That's probably not happening. Let's be realistic. The Colts over the Giants probably isn't happening. Browns over Commanders? Browns look horrible. That's probably not happening either. So if both of these teams win, it is not looking good for us. And then Cowboys over Commanders? I can see uh, Cowboys over Commanders here. And if that happens, then what? We need? We just need the Packers to lose one of their three games. And they probably would lose to the Vikings, and that would put us in the playoffs. Like, it can happen, but are we even going to win out? Like, are the Seahawks even going to win out? I mean, if we lose to the Jets, which honestly doesn't seem super unlikely, we need a lot of things to go our way. We need the Browns to beat the Commanders. We need the Packers to beat the Lions. And then what? We need uh, the Eagles. We need the Cardinals to beat Buccaneers, Eagles to beat the Saints. Like, if we don't win out, there's almost no way we're making the playoffs. If we win out, there's a decent chance. But it, honestly, it doesn't look good. The Seahawks have not been playing well this season, so I would not put my faith in us winning uh, you know, these last two games. But hopefully that will happen. If it does, we can still make the playoffs. Do I even do you even do we even want to make the playoffs? Do we tank the rest of the year? You know, like do we try and get a better pick in the rest of the year? Because we're just playing so bad. It's not like we're going to be able to do anything in the playoffs anyway. Might as well get a better pick and help with the future. Like, do we tank these last two games? I don't know. It's hard to say, but, man, it is hard watching the Seahawks right now. It's hard to have any, like, care in the world about this team because they don't seem like they care at all. I mean, we were playing the 49ers last week. Uh, and I, do we expect to win that game? No. Should it at least look competitive? Yeah. I mean, let me have some fun watching my team get destroyed. It's just, it was unbearable. And then this week, my God, we didn't even try. I think the entire first half, we had like two first downs, three first downs. And then we had like a big uh, big drive right before the half and got a field goal. Uh, I mean, DK Metcalf had a good game. Kenneth Walker kind of had a good game, but he also had a lot of really bad. Just It, it comes down a lot to our defensive line getting no pressure doesn't help us try and win. Our interior offensive line getting absolutely bodied and getting negative run plays early on, and then we, for some reason, decide to run it on second and long, and the same thing happens. Neither of those are helping us win games. So, honestly, if it were up to me, I think we go into the draft this offseason, we go into the free agency market this offseason, and we get interior offensive line and interior defensive line and maybe some fun pass rushers. What else do we really need? We don't need running back. We don't need wide receiver. We don't need tight end. We need offensive line. We need defensive line. Corners are pretty set. We got a lot of young, you know, high potential corners. Maybe we get one more corner or like a vet in the free agency market if there are good vets. I mean, safeties, we have a lot of money tied up in safety. We really can't get anyone there. Linebackers probably could do with some extra linebacker help. But really, it comes down to defensive line, offensive line, maybe linebackers. I, if we take a quarterback, you know, I think it'd be fun to have a young quarterback. But what is the young quarterback going to do with an offensive line that can't get a run game going? A, a young quarterback with a struggling defense that can't get pressure, that can't really stop drives, that really can't uh, do what they want. And then the quarterback, young quarterback, going into a team that's going to give up a lot of sacks because our interior offensive line sucks, give up pressure, and we can't get a run game going. I don't think that's a necessarily a good environment for a young quarterback to grow in. So with that, I believe that we should focus offensive line, defensive line, linebackers this draft. But uh, I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, honestly, we should just tank. <laughs> we should just tank the rest of the season, try and get a better pick. 
because the Broncos are probably going to win a few games because they are playing some garbage teams now. But overall, uh, yeah, bad loss to the Chiefs. The Seahawks' playoff hopes are dwindling, and they are dwindling fast. But that's going to do it for this video. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought about this. The Vikings won. That's good for us. They just won with a uh, walk-off field goal. Maybe our playoff hopes aren't dwindling that bad. But, my God, we suck. Uh, yeah, that's going to do it for the video. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought about this video. What do you think of our playoff chances? And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great day.